the calculator needs it to be in y equals format. So first I'm going to rewrite both of my equations. So top equation, I'm going to add 10 X over and then I'll divide by 18. And so I can reduce 10 18 or I can leave it really because the calculator <laughs> is going to be able to deal with any sort of fraction or decimal or decimals within fractions. Um, can other people hear me? Okay, good. <clears throat> so, um, but let's kind of clean it up as much as we can. Um, what is 10 eighteenths reduced to? Five ninths. So this gives me five ninths X subtract. And this also needs to, it doesn't go in evenly, but I can reduce this down to what? 13 ninths. So I have five ninths X subtract 13 ninths. And part of the reason that using the graphing calculator is nice is that would be hard to graph by hand to get that exact where 13 ninths is on our, for our Y intercept. Um, we also, when we come back from Thanksgiving break, we kind of get away from using a graph at all to solve these um, because if we have a decimal answer and we don't have a calculator. Um, we wouldn't be able to know exactly where, where my intersection point is. On my other equation, so I, subtract 6x and then divide everything by negative 9, which gives me what for my final equation with re reducing things. <clears throat> What's my final equation going to be there? Right, yeah, so negative over negative is going to make this a positive two thirds X and then subtract and three ninths reduces to one third there. Okay. There's my equation. <clears throat> so, yeah, Sam, that's just the top one. I, I, uh, I thought so. So now in my calculator, so I have my calculator on, where do I go to enter my equations? Which button am I going to press? And by the way, all the graphing buttons are in this grayed area. The Y equals, you can see I've used my calculator too much. So it just has an equal sign left. So I go to Y equals and I have an equation in there that I'm gonna clear out. And so I'm just using the arrows to go up and down and clearing out what I have there. And then I'm going to enter in five ninths, which to enter in a fraction, and this was talked about in the video, I'm using the division button. So I'm going five divided by nine. And then X, we use the X T theta N. We can, we do not use the alpha X because that's going to not, um, alpha X is like if you store a value for a certain letter, it's not going to operate the same way. So we want to use um, our X T theta N button. Subtract, not negative button, but subtract 13 ninths, and I hit enter. And my second equation, two thirds. So ideally you have a Chromebook right now and you're kind of working in the emulator as we work through each problem, which I don't know, maybe you can kind of split your screen a little bit so you can see what I'm doing and, and work along with me. It's hard to do this <laughs> remotely because normally I wait and I go, okay, everyone have their equation. Um, but there's 70 of you and <laughs> I can't see you. Yeah, having a handheld one's great right now because you can watch the screen and kind of follow along. So hopefully we have equations in and then where am I going to go next? Go to the graph, exactly. Now, if I need to adjust the graph, so if I go to the graph and it's going to be set at the standard viewing window, but let's just pretend if it wasn't, if I couldn't see, so in order for this to work, it has to intersect on the screen, which it looks like it will. Um, but if I couldn't, zoom, and I use zoom six a lot, zoom six is just negative 10 to 10 for both of the axes, or I can always go um, zoom out. So if I go zoom out, just so you know, like if you just wanna move backwards a little bit, I hit three, I have to hit enter once I get here. 
So if I hit zoom out or zoom in, I need to hit enter once I get back to the graph for it to actually do that. And that's, it's just nice to know how to manipulate your graph a little bit. And if I go back to zoom and I hit six, it gives me right back to my regular viewing window. Another way that you can adjust your window is using the actual window button. This is more like if you wanna be really specific what values you wanna see. Um, and so I can change and say what I want the X axis to go from here to here with a scale of one, Y axis to go from here to here with a scale of one. Okay, just to kind of know how to manipulate your graph a little bit. So let me just check my equations. I'm good to go, right? Okay. And so now I hit yes, second trace. So I go second trace, which brings me to the calc menu. And which option do I want? Option five, I want to know where it intersects, so I hit five. And this is where I have to go enter, enter, enter. So it's asking me questions. It's saying, is this your first line? And I go, yep, and hit enter. Second line, and I go, yep, hit enter. And then it'll ask if it wants you to guess the intersection point. And you say yes by hitting enter. And it thinks, and then it gives me my intersection point at negative 10, negative 7. Negative 10, negative 7. And I could still check it, especially in this one where the numbers are a little bit easier. I could plug that in um, and make sure that it works um, just because, you know, there's a lot of things that could go wrong in terms of entering it into the calculator. Or you could use the calculator to check it really quickly. Like I can type in to get out of your graph, by the way, you hit, I hit second mode, which clicks out of the graph. I can enter in negative 10 times negative 10 plus 18 times negative seven, it's going to automatically do order of operations when you use a TI calculator. So I can just type in this whole side of that equation and hit enter. Oh good, it gives me negative 26. And then I could enter this one, six times negative 10, subtract, different than the negative button, nine times the negative buttons down here, right? Negative seven, hit enter, it gives me three. Okay, so you can also use these calculators when you're doing this to do a quick check, um, especially if you have like some horrible equation with a lot of fractions going on, you can use this to do that and it'll automatically do the order of operations for you. Good. Okay, so now let's take time to rewrite each of these and then we'll just kind of go through the calculator for each. So if you haven't yet rewrite two, three and four and y equals and I'll do the same but I'll just do it quietly and then we can kind of check our equations against each other. So take a moment and look at my equations. And then if a few of you want to give me like, yep, that matches mine, that would be great. Okay, good. Great. Okay, so now let's just go through these calculator buttons a few times. So going to two, here are my equations. I have to go back into y equals, clear out what I have in here. And I enter in two thirds x subtract four, first equation, and three halves x plus seven halves. Okay, now if you're getting error messages or something weird, so let me show you a few, well, let's do this one. I'll show you a few different ways you get error messages and what to kind of look for. So I go ahead and graph 
And then I go to my calc menu, option five, enter, enter, enter. And I get an intersection at negative nine, negative 10 for number two. Now let me show you a few different kind of funky things that I see happen to students all the time. So one thing that happens is First of all, unless you have just like a Hawaii equation, a Y equals equation, you should never just have a horizontal line. But many, many times students forget to put X in. So if I had dropped X out of that first equation, when I graph, you'll notice that it just gives me a horizontal line. So that should always kind of be a little bit of a red flag unless you knew that you had a, a horizontal line. Um, to change your zoom back to normal, hit zoom and then six, and it'll go back to the normal screen. So that's one thing that happens to students a lot, and it should be a little bit of a like double check yourself that you should have a hoy there. Um, and if you do, if you're not supposed to, and you do, you probably just left X out like I did here. Another thing that happens um, when you get an error code is using negative instead of, well, that's not gonna, that one's not gonna matter. Um, let me make that back like this. Using subtraction instead of negative, for example, maybe out front, I think that one will give me an error. But um, changing those gives me, see, there's an error message syntax. So many times when I get an error message, I want to go back to y equals and make sure that negatives are negative so that if it was negative, which it's not, I want to use the negative button. And if it's subtract, I want to use the subtract button. Um, and the other thing that happens, like, let me delete that, is if I had used a negative here, it's not going to give me the same line. If I look at the graph, it's going to, it should look a little different. Yeah, what it does, so you have to be really careful there. If, you, if I did that, it didn't give me an error. What it does is it just multiplies by negative four instead of subtracting four. So you have to be really, really careful with those two differences, subtraction versus a negative number um, causes errors, or if I typed it in, it could give me just the wrong line and then I'm gonna get the wrong answer. Um, I'm trying to think of other ways that we get errors. Sometimes um, if, you, if your intersection point is not on the screen, it'll give you an error. I think for the most part, I tried to make sure they're all on our regular screen, um, but you may need to zoom out and then that would allow you to find, and it would give you an error if it wasn't on the screen. Yes, good one. Yeah, Addy, thanks for saying that. So another thing, and I didn't mention this in the video, see this plot one, plot two, plot three? Um, it should not be highlighted. So if a plot is highlighted, that means it's pulling like a data table that you've entered in somewhere. Um, and we do use that actually at the end of the year. But um, when we're looking at our system, we don't want the plot on. It's gonna give you, I probably said like dim min mismatch or something like that. So if on your, and hopefully on this, on the Chromebook lens, it's not set to that, but um, to turn them on and off, like to highlight them, I just go up and hit enter. So I went up and hit enter and I turned plot one on. And then if I need to turn it off, I go up and I hit enter and I turn plot one off. So absolutely, yes, it would give you an error. So you wanna make sure none of your plots are turned on when you use the calculator. Um, somebody asked how to find the calc menu. And so, the, so see the blue font above the regular gray buttons, the calc is in the blue font. So it's above trace, so I hit second, trace brings me to the calc menu. How do you get the y-intercept on the calculator? Um, what do you mean by that? So in the calculator, I'm going to just type this in. And I already know my y-intercepts because they're in my equation. All right, let's look at the next one. Like when you selected the y-intercept after you put it in the graph. What do you mean? Mm 
Right. Well, we don't want to mess with the stat plot at all. You can also, yes, you can also turn the stats off on and off here. But you don't need to go there ever right now. And you don't need to go to table setting. You don't need to go to format. We don't need to go to table at all. Right now, we're going to try to stick to just a few buttons. <laughs> all right. So my next one I have, so we need to be careful here. Negative X, so using the negative button, X subtract three. And then same idea here, make sure we use a negative button to X subtract one. So on this one, if I go to graph it and, um, and I either get an error, then I mess up and use subtract instead of the negative button. Or if your graph doesn't look like mine, then you used a negative at the end instead of subtracting the Y intercept. Okay, so that's what my graph looks like. And then second trace brings me to the calc menu, five, enter, enter, enter. And I get two negative five for my intersection point. Another question, how to find the intercept. I don't know what that means. We don't need to find the intercept. I mean, we know the, the y. Do you mean the intersection, maybe? Yes, OK. So you hit second, trace, then you go to intercept. OK, now that makes a lot more sense. OK, what do you mean the intercept? So second, trace, option number five. So I'm just pressing the number five. And um, then it will ask you the questions. You have to go enter, 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 and then it lands. And you only want to stop hitting enter when it goes to intersection. The other ones are just kind of asking you questions. That makes a lot more sense now, Aggie. <laughs> I was confused. And then when John asked it too, I was like, what are, what are we talking about? Okay, good. Let's, um, what if the line, it had, well, it will, because it's only going to have two. It would be like if I had several other lines in here, then maybe you want to move around and select just the only two you want to look at. But it will always select because we only have two lines in. It's going to select the two you want to look at. Okay, so let's look at the last one. Clear out what's in here. Negative 3x subtract 6. And negative six fifths x plus six fifths. And again, making sure we're using negative here, subtract there. Let's go to my graph. And also, we know all these little things, like these are both should be negative slopes, like kind of just checking general things that I know, making sure I type things in correctly. Because um, I know what these lines overall should look like, that this is a y intercept and that's the slope. And then second calc five, enter, 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 and intersection at negative four, six. And as you saw in the notes, I think in the notes, um, you're not, it's not always going to be integers or numbers that aren't decimals. Pretty sure in the notes they gave you some that you have to round. Um, and so always follow those directions, like on the quiz when you have to do the calculator section. So this says round to the hundredths place. So when we round, and this is from the notes yesterday, how do I know when to round up? Five or above, exactly. So just to kind of give us an example, if I had a number like 3.5, six, one, two, and I was rounding to the hundreds place, which is two decimal places, that would just become 3.61, okay? Because two is less than five. But if I had 3.617, then I'm going to round it to 3.62. So yeah, ex exactly, um, five or higher. So if it was a five or anything above a five, I'm going to round this place up and I'm looking at the number after where I'm rounding to. Okay, so just make sure when you do encounter 
intersection points on the calculator that are decimals that you pay really close attention to rounding. I think that's oh, probably sorry. most points off on these types of quizzes. Someone just said something about my volume was. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So on yesterday on my notes, I accidentally didn't move the um. I didn't understand how to move the little dot to the intersection point, and I just put um, what the x and the y said. Yeah. So I. Do I need to redo that or? Just um, do the, the homework today. We'll go back to calculator stuff. So you'll be able to make sure that you know how to do that um, correctly. And actually, now that I look at it, I'm looking at my key, which, I've, which I posted in there. I don't think I ever put the actual intersection points in. <laughs> so I'll, re, I'll, I'll put them in and I'll reload it into classroom. Um, but today you'll get more practice with the calculator. And that's a common thing kids do too. You have to do that enter, 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 and then only take the X, Y when it says intersection above it. Um, okay, so this was in the notes. I do wanna talk about the homework from last night, which was not, or from yesterday, which was not calculator stuff, but was just graphing systems and graphing systems of inequality. So I'm gonna show you answers if you haven't already looked, and then any of these that you want to talk about. Yeah, did you already? So somebody just asked, how do we enter an x equals equation into the calculator? You can't. You, uh, you won't be able to. So there is one. Um, it just auto generates systems for me. So there is one. On the, well, there's no answer here. So I'll just show it to you. The homework today, which is homework 26, I wrote on the key. I can't. Number nine, I can't do because it has an x equals. Um, so number nine on the homework today is not doable. <laughs> if you have an error, you got to kind of problem solve. So if you get an error, go back and look and see, did I put a negative when it should have been subtract or did I put subtract when it should have been negative? Do I have my X variable in there? Yeah, just skip number nine on the homework. So let me show you the bottom two graphs from, from yesterday's homework. This is homework 25. Number four. And back side. Number two. Number seven, yeah, so seven. You can see my white out. I went the wrong way at first on seven. I was frustrated. On seven. Gemma, on seven is the next equal, or are you saying is that why we're not doing nine on the homework? Okay, and then we went to inequalities. So make sure your shaded region where your solutions overlap is darker for your inequalities, eight. Right. Two. I'm trying to show all four of those. Yeah. And 10. Okay. That should, I mean, clear up any confusion we have. While you have this out, we could do it today, Sarah. Okay, while you have this out, why don't you flip over on 26 and just cross off nine. 
So you remember not to do that one. It's not going to work in the calculator. You could do it by hand. You could, do, you could graph it and you use graph paper. It's not like unsolvable. It's just the calculator can't, can't take that as equal equation. Okay, so let's talk about this homework. So starting on um, this first page, do graphs here where I need to rewrite. Now there are fractions. You could have cleared the fractions first and then moved from there. But because the fractions just on the x term, I just added the three halves x over. So I get y equals three halves x plus two on this one. And here to get y by itself, I just subtracted two over. So then I get y equals one half x subtract two. Will we have a quiz on these? Yes. So the quiz on Friday, so let me say a few things. There's, these are all private comments. So let me make sure I clear up what I'm talking about. I've gotten a couple of private comments about um, not realizing the inequalities were part of the homework. So you can do it now. You can add it now, yeah, or some point today, that's fine. Um, the quiz, so I got another question. Will we have a quiz on these? Yes. So the quiz on Friday is in two parts. So the first part is non-calculator and it's essentially what's on this homework. So graphing systems by hand and graphing inequalities. And then the last page is um, calculator, what we were doing for our warm up this morning, okay? So um, then let's see, so I have positive two, slope of three halves, and you may wanna go backwards to just to get a few extra points so that um, remember when we're graphing systems, our line needs to be super accurate. So if you don't have rulers in the classroom, you do algebra at school, you may want to bring a ruler. Uh oh, what did I do here? My line is not super accurate. What did I do? One, two, three. Why am I not matching up? One, two, three halves. Oh no, I'll be fine. I'll be here. Yeah, I'm just a little bit off. When it intersects what I call behind the origin, um, it's a little bit harder to get the answer. So it's a lot easier, let me show this. It's a lot easier when it intersects over here because we tend to do our slope this way and so it's nice and even. When it intersects kind of backwards, um, it's a little bit harder, which is why sometimes I go backwards and get additional points so that my line is just super accurate. If when you draw in your lines, you notice that they would cross over here and it's not 100% accurate, then I would go back to the y-intercept and work the slope to make sure that your line's not just off a little bit. Like with a ruler, if I only had a couple points, like if I only had those two points, you see how I could be way over here off. I could be even like more off. So the more points you get with your slope, the more accurate your line's gonna be. Yes. So the calculator at school, you have to have your Chromebook on you on Friday to use the PI84 calculator. Um, or if you have a handheld calculator, you have to bring it with you on Friday. Or if, if you're Zooming Friday, then we'll just be doing it over Zoom and you can use your Chromebook. <clears throat> okay, so then this intersects at negative four, negative four. On number four, let's see. So rewriting this, I get y equals three fourths x subtract four. So what a negative four, three fourths, one, two, three fourths on my line. And then here I get y equals negative x plus three. So up to three, negative x. Make sure you draw on the line. So you notice I just kept going negative one over one until I met my intersection point, but you should have your system drawn and then your point. So that's at four, negative one. And make sure you identify your intersection point. Don't just draw it and then leave it. Um, you need to have that intersection point too. Okay, and on the back side, that number seven. So again, there's a fraction here. You could multiply everything by 14 to clear it um, on the second equation, but because it's just attached to X, so all I did, I mean, all you really have to do is add Y over in this equation. 
And so then you're going to get y equals, and if I want to reorder this, um, I'll have negative 3 14 x subtract 18. So there's my equation. So I go negative 18. Now I can't go negative 3. So instead I'll go positive. Oh, I know why this one's funny because of the scale, right? Yeah, that's why I had white out too. So the scale on this one, I don't love this graph because <laughs> they did a scale of two. So if I'm going to go 14 on here, then I need to go three, which is going to be in the middle. Like this is going to be three units up because this is two and that's four units up. So I'm going three. Now, I don't always have to do that. Like if it wasn't 14, if it was like three halves, it wouldn't matter if I just counted boxes because it would have just been a multiple of three halves, but I can't go, um, there's not 14 boxes this way, which is why I have to use the scale of the graph instead. So what I mean by that, if I had, let me just do a pencil. If I had a different line that wasn't as large of a denominator as this, if I had like y equals two thirds x, I could go here and I could still just go up two over three because up two over three is four six on the scale, which is still two thirds. So technically I could have gone three and then over 14 and it just would have been up six over 28 instead in terms of the scale and that would have been fine but I can't go 14 this way which is why I then use I just went up three instead and then go to um, 14 on here oh man two four six eight ten twelve fourteen there we are and I put a point okay so that is tricky because of the large slope um, I can't just use the boxes there and keep it on the graph but again, normally, normally the scale and all of that, it's, I don't have to pay that close attention to as long as I can count boxes and keep it on the graph. Um, my other equation, so I'll draw on this line in a minute. My other equation would become y equals one half x subtract eight. So I'm at negative, there's that line. I'm at negative eight. And so for this one, I can do one half. So I'm just gonna count up one over two. Now, technically with the scale, it's up two over four. That's still one half, so I'm good. Up one over two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go backwards and get it really accurate over here. And I can see that that falls on the line. I don't have a, let me get my ruler ruler. So I have this first line and then this line that I had to kind of estimate because it wouldn't fit scale wise. And then it's intersecting at this negative 14, that point that I had drawn in, which is negative 14. And because it's between negative 14 and negative 16, it's at negative 14, negative 15. And I could have gone back and plugged that in and checked it and the 14 would have worked out fine in terms of the fraction up above to check it. Um, and especially if you get something that feels a little iffy in terms of your estimating where your point is a little bit, um, it's a good idea to check, check it afterwards. Now I wouldn't give you something that's like, I mean, there was a lot of little things you had to be concerned about for this particular line. Okay, so now let's talk inequalities. So really, we're just, um, you cannot check um, the hand-drawn graphs in the calculator, but you can check them like by just plugging it in and doing the math. Um, in the calculator is actually more good, but not, not in the first couple of pages. You want, to, you want me to check it? So, um, sure. So you can either go to your rewritten ones, or sometimes it's safer to go here in case I rewrote it wrong, right? So yes, I'll go over 13. So on the first one, negative X, so negative, negative 14 equals negative 16, subtract two, and then Y is negative 15. So I'm just plugging in X and Y, which gives me 14 equals negative 16 plus 30. 
gives me 14 equals 14. So it works in my first equation. Now it's a system, so it also needs to work in the other equation. It can't just be a solution for one, it has to be a solution for both. So my other equation, and again, a little safer to go back to the original equation, unless it's really hard to check in. Um, so substituting in negative y, so negative negative 15 minus 18, subtract 3 14 times negative 14. So it looks a little scary to substitute in, but it's actually not that bad. This becomes positive 15. This negative 3 fourths times negative 14, well, first of all, it'll become positive. The 14 are just going to cancel. 14 divided by 14 is just 1 times 3 gives me 3. Okay. And then I get 15 subtract 18 is negative 3. Oop, lost that side of my equation. And I get 0 equals 0. Okay, so it works in both equations. I know that that's the point that's going to work for equation one and equation two. Okay, inequalities. So we have to just, we're really just graphing uh, inequalities as we did last unit. And then in the end, we'll see where they overlap. So um, on my first one, I, this is already in y equals. So I have a y-intercept at negative five and a slope of two. And a solid line there because it's um, less than or equal to. Now, there's a few different ways I can determine how to shade. I could test a point. If I test 0, 0, then it would give me 0 is less than or equal to negative 5, which is not true. So it would tell me to shade not towards 0, 0, but the other half of my graph. Or if you pay close attention to dividing by negatives or flipping your sign, you can also say less than would be below the line. Greater than would be above the line. So because it's less than or equal to, it's below the line. And then on my other graph, I have to rewrite here. So dividing by three gives me negative two thirds plus one third X is less than Y, or let's rewrite that actually as Y is greater than one third X minus two, ooh, two thirds. So really all I did there is flip this around, but if I flip sides, remember I have to flip around the sign or because it was opening towards Y before, it still needs to be opening towards Y if I flip it around. This is going to be a dashed line. So I'm gonna kind of um, estimate where negative two thirds is and then I'll go up one over three. Thankfully, we don't have to find an intersection point for our inequality graph. So I'm just estimating that line that I'll draw a dashed line in for. And then again, being careful with flipping signs, greater than means I'd be shading above. Or if I tested zero, zero and got plugged in zero for both of that, it would give me negative two um, is less than zero, which is true, which means I'm gonna shade towards zero, zero, or greater than I'm gonna shade above. So when I'm doing this inequality, I'm totally ignoring the one that's already on the graph. Now, once I have both of them, I can see that the overlap is right there. And that's where I should make sure is very clearly darker because that's the solutions that would work for both inequalities, okay? So same idea on nine. So rewriting this um, equation gave me y equals is sorry, is greater than or equal to one fourth X subtract three fourths. If I rewrite that, and then again, notice I had to flip around the inequality to get Y over there. So estimating where negative three fourths is, slope of one fourth, making sure I check solid dotted line, that should be a solid line. Now I rewrote my equation and I paid attention to flipping the signs. So I can just say, well, greater than, should be above the line or zero, zero would work if I tested it. My other inequality becomes y is greater than negative x. So y intercept at zero, slope of negative one. This one would be a dashed line. I can't test zero, zero, zero. I could test one, one if I wanted to check a point which would give me one plus one or two is greater than zero, which works. 
Um, or I see it's greater than, so it should be shading above the line here. And the yellow and the red overlap in that top corner. Okay. So as I'm graphing each, I'm really ignoring the other inequalities that are on the graph. I'm just kind of graphing along and then in the end, figuring out where it overlaps. So a few things for your quiz. Uh, if you want to bring colored pencils, that may be helpful. Um, definitely use a pencil because a pen, you're not going to be able to see quite as well where the overlap is. And it is a little harder with just one color to see where it overlaps. So just kind of be thoughtful in terms of what supplies you bring to do these inequality graphs. Um, and you don't have to shade. Um, I could have like used little arrows to indicate where I'm shading and then figure out and just shade the overlap. Um, but I think as we start doing these, it's nice to kind of just shade each and then visually see where it should be darker. Um, 10 has three inequalities, but only one of them needs to be rewritten. This becomes no flipping of my sign, so I'm not dividing by a negative. Negative four fifths x plus eight fifths. So again, I'm kind of estimating eight fifths is like one and three fifths. So maybe I'm like here, slope of negative four fifths. So negative four, one, two, three, four. And again, thankfully I don't have to worry about an intersection point. So I'm really, I'm just estimating that fractional y-intercept. Dashed line less than, so I should be shading below the line, or um, I could have tested a point. And then um, the last two are just a hoi and a vat. So this is a horizontal line where y is negative two, and it's gonna be a dashed line. There's my second line and it's greater than, so greater than negative two would be above. So if I just had the two inequalities, then the overlap would be over here. But I have a third inequality, which is a vertical line, undefined slope, where x is negative four. So one, two, three, four. There's negative four. Again, another dashed line, which means the solutions don't lie on the line. So if it had been less than, I would have shaded this way and my overlap would be here. It's greater than, I'm shading the other way. And it overlaps in this middle triangle. So you really do have to pay attention. You can't just like graph it and be like, oh, well, look, you know, there's a shape there. So I'm gonna shade that. That's not always the case. Um, so you need to pay attention to each individual inequality and then where all three have solutions would be where you shade darker. I'll do 13 first, because um, I know some of you are going to have to leave, and that one was asked about a lot. And then I'll go back and do 12. If you have to leave at, when it gets closer to 9, that's OK. You could always go to the very end of the YouTube video if you wanted to watch 12 after. On 13, rewriting this. So when I rewrite this line, I'm dividing by a negative. So let me actually write this step. So first, I subtract 3x. Then when I divide everything by negative 2, I need to flip my inequality sign. Okay, so there's my line, y-intercept at negative three, slope of three halves, solid line. Because I flipped my sign because I divided by a negative, that should be less than or below the line is where I'm at. negative x plus four. Um, I didn't have to put my sign because I'm not dividing by a negative. So I go one, two, three, four, slope of negative one. Again, another solid line. Didn't flip it, it's less than, which means I'm shading below. So I kind of, as I go, I kind of pay attention to where the Oh, you know what? I may have had the wrong area shaded, actually, now that I look at this. Right now, my overlap is here, right? Yeah, I may have shaded darker in the wrong spot. <laughs> yeah, I may have. Let's see. So then um, this one's tricky when it's either x is 0 or y is 0. So x is 0 here, which means I'm going to have a dashed vertical line that actually runs along the y-axis. 
greater than would be over this way. So I'm shading. And so as I'm shading, I'm keeping track of where the overlap is. So right now the overlap is like here. There, the blue shadings here, red and yellow. So I'm like here right now. And then I add my last one, which is a hoy, right? At negative four. So one, two, three, four, dashed line. Yeah, I totally did. Although you have to be careful with this one. So going up, I've run out of color. So I'll just use a pencil. This is greater than, so shading up. Now, what I mean by being careful is there's this little area right here. So it kind of looks like a triangle, but this is not a part of our solution area, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Somebody loves my ruler. I love my ruler too. It's actually my seven-year-old's ruler. So it's not actually a triangle. It's like this little piece is cut off, if you can see that. Um, so it shouldn't be shaded in that little corner there because it's only from here over. Um, but yes, totally, I'm gonna fix my key on here. Yes, it did, my mistake. So let's check uh, 12 now. Uh, I'll go faster on this one. So rewriting y is greater than or equal to negative x subtract three, negative three, negative x, solid line, greater than, so I'm shading above. Now on the second one, if you're going above below, you do have to flip your sign, so I'd be dividing by a negative and it'd become y is greater than or equal to, um, x subtract three, right? Yeah, so I'm at negative three, slope of one, solid line. And then um, greater than, so I'm shading above. And last, this is a hoy at one, two, three, also a solid line. Less than, so I'm shading below. This means I'm shading down here. And the overlap is in this middle area here. Okay. And I know some of you, yeah, I know you have class meetings. So I, we just finished any questions that people had. You have some practice today with the graphing calculator. Um, so spend some time on that. And you're all set to go. Sorry that we ran a little late. I'll update the key for that homework since it didn't have any answers on it. Have a good day.